Well, hey everybody, it's Angel, and welcome to another episode of Exploring in My Explorer. My guest today is the amazing, wonderful, sweet, funny Cameron Silver. Thank you for having me. Thank you for Thank saying yes. Oh, my, my pleasure. I, this has been my dream to get in, get in the Explorer with you. <laughs> I love it. I love I've, it. I love I've it. I've arrived. Yes. Oh, no, no. I, I have to tell you, I was researching Cameron and his career and his life before sitting down. And I was, I'm so impressed by you. And you're so humble. Oh, thank you. And, you know, the average, you know, people that interact with you backstage have no idea that you recorded an album. I did, yes. That you are a, not only do you own a store, you're an author. Mm -hmm. You've collaborated. Oh, there's my book. Yeah, there's your book. Very How good convenient. product placement. Thank, Thank you. You. <laughs> um, you collaborated on uh, the Met fashion show, or was it? Um, I, I, I did something for uh, Mocha in Los Angeles, okay. but I have done fundraising for the Met in New York. There we go. So. I mean, just so many amazing things, but, but while you have your life revolves a lot around fashion mm -hmm. you didn't go to school for fashion no this is like what am i doing working in fashion my bachelor's is in theater and when when i was in ever since i was a little kid i was interested in acting and when i was a sophomore in high school i first i went to beverly hills high school so i'm like the okay. 90210 cliche there was a recruiter from ucla who saw me act and i was guaranteed admission to UCLA and I certainly wasn't going to get into UCLA as an athlete or as, or as an <laughs> academic I mean my grades are pretty good and that's what sort of encouraged this career in acting and theater I wow. just wasn't that great Okay. Oh, no? except except when the recruiting director saw me that was like my grade that was my Meryl Streep moment it's all been downhill <laughs> well that is so fascinating so well how did that evolve into fashion, I you know part of your book I was reading uh, last night talked about you clearly remember seeing your mother in a fabulous was it Terry Mugler a, yes. a suit yes well, I mean did my, I say that right yeah I mean, okay. yeah you know he, Terry he gave Terry. Me, Terry Mugler when I went to see his exhibit in Canada yes. the French woman pronounced it Terry Mugler oh she said it so, wrong she's okay. in trouble so no so how do you say it Terry Mugler okay I know isn't that exhibition was amazing but we we both got to see it. I am um, UCLA required costume design as okay. a theater major. Oh, okay. Now, I only had to take one semester of acting, okay. but I think I had a year of costume design and I was good at that and I learned my fabrics and um, sewing techniques. I'm not a good machine sewer, but a hand sewer. Wow. Um, I could thread a needle, not a machine. I, I, I basically represents every everything I can do in life. <laughs> if it's manual, I'm good at it. If it's very mechanical, not so good. And um, I was always interested in fashion because my mom and dad like clothes and, mm -hmm. and a lot of our travel as a child, I'm, I'm an only child, so my parents took me everywhere. We would see a cultural site, but we would also shop locally. So I had a lot of visceral memories of, you know, being in South America and buying local craft mm. or design. So I'm at UCLA and, and learning my fashion and my fashion history and get out of college and suddenly I um, I'm singing German cabaret this is okay. a long answer and singing the songs of Kurt Weill and Friedrich Hollander songs of the 20s and 30s and I started thrifting looking for men's clothing Wow because I was like in Seattle for two weeks Orlando for two weeks all around the country and I found a lot of women's clothes and I sent them all to my parents so they had a living room filled with clothes Wow Wow. And a store was born um, circa in 1997. I okay. opened a store. So it was just a fortuitous accident. So I always tell young people, like, you're just not that in control. You just never know where destiny is going to take you. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Agreed. And I always say, be open to the possibility. Totally. Yes, because one thing can always lead I, to something else. I mean, who knew that recycling old songs from the 20s and 30s would lead to me recycling old clothes, which would then lead to being on QVC 24-7. Yes. Amazing. Amazing, 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 amazing. So now Cameron is one, if you don't know this, he is one of the hardest working people I know. He is, if he is not at QVC, he is traveling around the country uh, promoting his book mm -hmm. and collections from his store. Amazing. It's all, all, the calendar is full. So when you're not working, when you need some downtime, where's your favorite place to escape? 
Well, I mean, I, if I can get back home to LA, that really is okay. like my, my happy place just to be in my house. Um, but when I'm not in LA and this time I spend on the East Coast, it's really going to the theater. That's nice. like, I always say that's my therapy. I should yeah. probably really have a an actual therapist. <laughs> but, Shouldn't we all? But, but, but I find like my time in the theater, being in community, in an audience, and uh, experience a great performance, it does center me in, in in a very unusual way. At the same time, I also enjoy my outdoor time. So it can gotcha. be, you know, going for a hike not far from Westchester mm-hmm. or going through Central Park. So, like, I like the, the city slickness mm-hmm. of, of theater, but I also like my commune with nature. Gotcha. But catch me in bed in L.A. and I'm happy. Nice. <laughs> yeah. What was the last show you saw? I saw last week. I went to see Slave Play, which will probably, which may very well win the Tony for for best play. Very, oh, a wonderful wow. young playwright. I also saw the Tina Turner musical, which okay. is okay. Adrian Warren, who plays Tina Turner, is unbelievable. Okay. I am seeing this tonight. I will see an Actors Fund uh, concert performance of the musical Grand Hotel. Oh boy! I will see a Tuesday. I'm doing. Oh, Tuesday. I'm going to a lecture. Wednesday, a lecture of Xander Rhodes, the okay. British designer, is speaking. Wednesday, I will go to a cocktail reception for Stephen Sondheim, the great <gasps> American composer and lyricist. Oh, Merrily We Roll Along is one of my favorites. Bra- brilliant piece of theater. Brilliant. Yeah, hard, oh. hard show to get right. Oh. But, so I'm doing that. Oh. And then I go, New York City Center has a revival of Evita where they're going to do Evita with a young actress and a um, contem- uh, an, uh, an actress who's... Uh, of age. I got you. So I'm trying to say the very, correct age? Yes. As a, because, for the you part? Know, yeah, because normally they have Evita played by one actress and she's playing Evita at like 15 and then Evita when she dies at 33. So yeah. I'll see that. And um, it's like I just try to see as much stuff as possible. I love I'm it. addicted to the theater. Wow. That's amazing. Oh my goodness. Love, 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 love. Are you uh, currently working on any passion projects? Because you're so creative. Are you working on anything? You know, I'm through my store in LA, it's where I kind of delve into my the, the vintage world that I mm-hmm. love and the high fashion world. So we're doing a really interesting project in LA on the 20th with the two young women who founded uh, an Instagram account called Every Outfit on Sex in the City, oh. which has been become a phenomenon. They're great to follow. Okay. They're, ba- they're, they're taking every single outfit and identifying what the actresses and, and actors wore. So we're going to have a conversation about the impact of Sex in the City 20 years later, the oh. impact of it historically, and what the impact is today. Because the show still has... The, the show really yeah. helped demystify... Um, luxury and high fashion and, and made a lot of fashion designers household names yeah. so it'll, that'll be a, a fun project so I like these sort of demi I call it demi academia demi academia I love it a- education but about fashion exactly like in, in an entertaining way and then I'm still on you know doing these speeches about the history of fashion so my favorite thing to do is really meet people in real I mean I'm a people person so I will. He really is. I, I he really, really is. love. Like I love yeah. when I meet our QVC friends and family mm-hmm. out and about. Um, so yeah, I've got a couple speeches lined up this at, toward the end of this year, and um, I'll do it again next year. So it, it, it's fun. I, I need to. You know, with QVC is such an amazing experience. Yes. Right? You get this incredibly um, dedicated and and and, and True. truly True. like beautifully embracing family so I like to meet you guys in real life yeah. you know so it's it's a lot of fun and I love that when I'm doing something for my store decades which is high-end vintage the QVC fans come and they're wearing some H by Halston and they're buying a little vintage piece you know because we're all fashion lovers yes absolutely yes and some of your pieces that you wear Amazing. He's an impeccable dresser. Oh. I actually had to step up my game a little bit to uh, have this conversation. I was like, you, oh, you I got better a little not. leather moto going little, on. It looks great. A little something, yeah. you know. Um, speaking of fashion, what is your number one thing that you say over and over again, giving fashion advice to women? Well, I tell women to shop more like a man. Okay. And the reason why I say that is that if you ever watch a man go shopping, he's very interested in his tailoring like you, okay you know when a man buys a suit or a pair of pants you you get they get tailored women sometimes are like I'm just gonna use the sleeve or um, oh I can't buy this dress because the shoulder strap is okay. too long so um, 
think about how a man is is very meticulous about the tailoring. That being said, your tailor is probably more important than your shrink. Wow. So a great tailor yeah. can transform your clothing. Yes. The the other thing, I mean, I, there's lots of words of advice. This is sort of my thing. But I always say it's chic to repeat. I really want to encourage people, especially in a world of social media where mm -hmm. you think, I was photographed in this. I can't wear it again. It's like, no, yes, you can. Because real style is how you take something in your wardrobe and continue to morph it so that you you create new memories mm -hmm. in, in your clothing. So have a good tailor and um, make some good memories in your clothes many times over. I love it. In, in that vein, do you feel, do you think that the way we dress affects how we think? Oh, completely. Like if I'm having like, if when I'm tired or having an icky day, I'm gonna put on something bright and happy because not only will it make me feel good, but the reaction I'll get from people, it's like that energy gets um, transported to me. So mm -hmm. uh, the the other day I was going to the Pennsylvania Ballet's gala. It was about a month mm -hmm. ago. And I had you know, been traveling like crazy. It's like, oh man, I got like a couple hours of sleep and I've got to go to this gala. So I put on a really shocking pink tuxedo from 1991 by the Vivian West but it's on my Instagram so if you follow me at Cameron Silver yes you'll, you'll see it and I put it on it's like yeah I'm gonna nail it I'm gonna be good and like people just stopped me constantly because it was a happy color yeah. it made me feel good I mean clothing is it's like I always say like we're all kind of wearing drag but you put on sometimes you're in your happy clothes sometimes you're in your comfort clothes sometimes you're in like your sexy clothes so it's like it all is reflective of our moods but sure. clothes really can um i mean clothes aren't like a med mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's not like you're gonna take an antidepressant and you're like oh i'm so happy now but but i think that they can transform how we feel because when you're when your exterior gets a little uplift it can infiltrate into in, into I your agree. interior. I, I say sometimes you have to fake it till you make it. Yeah, and, and, and let me tell you, yes. sometimes when I'm schleppy, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I don't get out of the schlep. Like, that's yeah. the problem. If I'm like, in, if I'm in my yoga gear all day, it's like I am not my most, um, I'm my, my A game isn't on. Gotcha. So I, 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 I think it's just like, it's fun to dress up. Mm -hmm. And I always tell everybody like, Act like you're walking on a red carpet. Now, I'm not saying you need to be on a ball gown or something like that, Correct. but it's just yeah. like like there's a step and repeat behind you and you're going to get your photo taken. And, and in, in a sense, we're all kind of walking with a step and repeat because of Instagram and Facebook. So um, every time I've been sloppy is when I run into somebody really important and powerful. It's like when I'm in the and sweats like, and the Uggs, mm -hmm. um, which is fine. But, but I think making that little bit of effort, it's not that hard to look chic. Mm -hmm. And chic doesn't have to be dressed up. She can be a H by Halston uh, tee, a pair of... Dream jeans. Yeah, exactly. A cute little shoe and a scarf. And it's like That's you look it. put together. Mm -hmm. It's like there's there's no excuse not to look chic. Agreed. It's so much more fun. It is a lot more fun. Chic, chic that, or yeah. schlep, make your choice. You want to be chic. <laughs> Hashtag chic or schlep. Yes, exactly. That's going to be new. I mean, I don't want my tombstone to say, and Cameron was schleppy. I wanted to say Cameron was chic. <laughs> Well, you are chic. You're fabulous. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. I oh, mean, my, this time fun. is so precious, and I adore you. Well, I hope I, you know that. I, I I love working with you. And thank you, you know, the fun thing is when I came to QVC, I knew who you were just because I was like, you know, Quacker Factory is legendary. So I was like, I'm meeting Angel because you know you you are a legend at QVC. You're very sweet. So thank and you. you you and I'm a legend in my own mind. No, no, you really are. <laughs> and, and, and Angel is always you're always in a good mood. Thank you. And, he, and if Thank you're you. not, you're wearing something cute and it makes people think you're in a good mood. Exactly. <laughs> so there. Exactly. It works. So make sure you follow Cameron Silver on Instagram. Are you on Facebook at yes, all? Yes. Uh, um, uh, Cameron Silver Style is my Facebook. Cameron okay. Silver for Instagram. Awesome. Follow me. And I love DMs. Yes. I mean, as long as they're appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. Woo! Oh, my goodness. Can't look at that on an airplane. <laughs> yes. Yes. Can't look at that. But anyway, thank you so, thank so you much. Thank you for having me. Thank you for watching another episode of Fri um, Exploring in My Explorer. And I will see you next time. Bye. Bye.